you've got you've got Derek Young, you've Hi. got Grant Flanders, you've got Matt Hall. It is the KSO show brought to you by Tallgrass Tap House, which is where we are on this Friday night in Manhattan. It's another busy night here at Tallgrass. It always is. That's not me to sell in there. Their restaurant flanders are always busy here now. Oh, it's so much. Oh my god, it's it's more busy than it's even ever been. I feel like because of a huge party behind yeah. us, it just makes it look like it's really packed tonight. Right, like, it, holy certainly, cow. it certainly is. I mean, but me and Dy did get a spot in front after driving around like three times. Oh, best parking spot you can get here, Dy. Love it. Best it's parking great. spot you've gotten in in how ever. long? Probably ever. Probably I mean, ever. I, mean, I could have drove right into the front door. Yeah. Here. People don't want to hear about that though. They want to hear about K State sports. They? they want to hear us. Yeah, answering their questions. Uh, my voice is not too good right now. I went to some fake sports the other night and yelled for them like it was real sports because that's how you do it. But the good news is I got loads of questions from the foundation. I really appreciate everyone who asked them. I got DY here to talk. I got Flanders here to talk. I'm, I'm going to try not to answer a one of these. Now, good. now, Flanders, you say something so stupid, right, that I have to put in some put in some uh, some color some actual, to it. Yeah. I guess, you know, I some guess actual like, yeah. analysis. Yeah. Oh, jeez, <laughs> like that. Oh, All right, yeah. here we go. I, I was okay. I like that. The kids are listening. <laughs> Question listening. number one from Nelio2, who has been patiently waiting to, for us to do a Q&A pod for quite a while. So yeah. I really appreciate that. I think we're good. Yeah. Um, Thank you. I think we're good. Yeah, if you guys want to keep those, we can. No, I'm good. Yeah. Uh, keep those. Yeah, keep Thank you. So, sorry, but we got, I get the Korean fried yeah, wings you know. is what it is, and like I don't finish them. I'll take know. them home. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Now to the questions. No more talk about no more. fluff. None. Okay. No fluff. A couple questions for you. He says, good Friday to you all. I've got to get out there sometime to one of your shows at Tallgrass. We would love you to. We had a gentleman. I don't believe it was you because you didn't say it was you. But 30 minutes ago, who came up and said he introduced himself, member of the site. That's awesome. Like We really appreciate that. But a couple questions. I'm going to ask these to Derek. Derek, do you see our football program coming into a new era of needing to pay top assistants much more than in recent past? And is it even possible for us to do so? You and I had this whole conversation actually in the car off the air on the way over. We didn't actually answer it as well as probably this question needs it to, but that's all to start at you. Uh, do you think it needs to change, and is it even possible for K-State to change it? Does it need to change? Probably if you want to be able to keep guys like Scotty Hazelton. I mean, because I mean, we'll, we'll shy away from him. He's going to get about a million a year, maybe a little more for Michigan State. I don't think K State could have got to seven seventy five. So right, they're well short of the number right now. Just even a comparison to, well, I'll say, a middle of the road Big Ten program. You hear that, Flanders? <laughs> middle of the road Big Ten program, Michigan State. Uh, yep. But. <laughs> <laughs> so okay, fair enough. If, you, if, you can't, <laughs> I didn't say it. if you're still a quarter of a million shy of a middle of the road Big Ten program, then maybe it needs to change. But I don't know how you change that. You probably can, and I don't think it's possible. I know. I don't. Middle of the road in a 14 te- Big Ten s- conference? Is that all there is now? 14 in the yeah. Big Ten? I don't even know. Shrunk, like, I really yeah. have no idea how many are in there. I said 20 earlier. I mean, <laughs> while we're talking. Uh, question two. I'm going to ask this to both of you. Um, which is more concerning for you guys to lose? I'm going to ask Flanders first because you might have a funny way to look at this. Which is more concerning to lose? Scotty Hazleton or potentially strength and conditioning coach Chris Dawson? Scott, well, yeah, I mean Scotty Hazelton, but it's funny you say that. But right. it, it, Scotty is going Scottie to, Hazleton. yeah, right. he's so going to you, my first answer. team of uh, I was born into, but the Michigan State Spartans. Right. So yeah, you're right. Actually, Chris Dawson, that's a good, good, right. good point. <laughs> now for a non-Michigan State Sparty guy, he's not going to the Buckeyes. Chris Dawson's not going to the Buckeyes. He might go to Bama. I mean, but I mean, he's not going to the Buckeyes, to my knowledge. In theory, if they're both gone, which is a bigger, lo- or which? Let me read his question. Which is more concerning to you? More, I don't think. I would sell, say concerning, more concerning would, for me would be Chris Dawson. And that's not because I think it spells trouble that they're losing both of these men. I don't think that it is. I just think that from everything we, uh, we've kind of gathered from Chris Kleiman's probably network of contacts and connections, it sure seems like he probably has a broader pull when it comes to coaches than it does strength and conditioning coaches. I think it's uh, harder yep. to replace a strength coach. Yeah. This is from Extend to Bruce, but it's a football question. I'm only going to throw it at D.Y., and if you have anything to add, you know, jump on in here. Who would you pick for D.C.? The question specifically states D.Y., not who you think they will get, but who would the best option would be. Now, I'll throw some flavor in here, too. I mean, it's a reasonable pick, right? You can't pick Gus Bradley from the Chargers, which would be a great pick. You yeah, know? hey, but, uh, worked but, at North Dakota State. Well, do what? He worked at North That's Dakota true. State. That's true. There's a, hey, that could be that, that could be the case. But within these realistic, the names used on the board, 
um, Joe Klanderman, uh, Van Malone, whatever you know, name. What would you? What pick would you have reasonably if you were making this hire for K State? From the names you think are possible. For the names that I think that are possible, I would. I, I'm sorry to think I would just do Joe Klanderman. Yeah. And I don't know that he's the best defense coordinator on the market, but I think that at the time they're doing things right now. Uh, the timing, I think, would suggest that you probably need more for continuity and, and less of a deviation from the what the norm was for the players, especially since we're only two weeks before spring football. And spring football is a big portion of the football calendar. And when you add on to that, I think if you look for outside candidates, aren't they going to have a similar resume than Joe Klanerman you when you're working so. off the same budget? Right. I think so. Right. You're, you're probably not going to go and find some sitting dominant P5 coordinator who's going to take – I'm just throwing – I'm just making numbers up. If you are, then you right, take then them. Sure, sure, take them. I don't want your answer because Red I want – <laughs> Thank you. Because I want your answer for the next question okay, okay. from Rango Jones. Uh-huh. And D.Y., I do not want you to even comment on this question. You keep your mouth shut over there <laughs> and drink your water. This is from our friend Rango Jones. In regards to the latest breaking development on KSO – what are a few names we should keep an eye on as potential candidates to replace Derek Young as senior <laughs> recruiting analyst when he officially announces his departure to Ohio State for double the salary? I mean, it's going to happen. D.Y. has dropped every hint possible on the board that he's leaving yep. us for more money and all he cares about is money. Uh-huh. So give me some names, and maybe maybe you should start with yourself. Maybe you should sell yourself first, but who well, can fill this know, role? I don't want to. I'll let you. I'll let you sell me. I don't want to sell well, myself. Well, I can't. I have nothing to do. I mean, like, okay, give me some outside Logan names. Logan Mance. No. Logan Mance is a good name. Logan, Man- Logan Mance is good. Let's see who else. Let's see who else. Who else? That's what about pretty it? bad. You said, I can't tell myself I want you to, and Dale says, I can't. Yeah, yeah, right. I, no, I, I thought you would catch that. What about what about a guy like we've, we've had We've had nice conversations like Brett McMurphy? Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. We, we could get Murphy. him. Yes, we could get him. Can he I would do well. I mean, uh, no, you don't get a say in this. You don't get to pick your success. What did you say? Can I have his job? If Brett McMurphy's oh, coming maybe. here. I thought you were going to say, can go I there. say something? I was going to say, no, you don't get to pick your successor. No, you don't get to go back. You don't get to go, no. But, but Bill, Bill I'm Snyder wouldn't no. pick his successor. Adrian, well, Adrian, uh, he, hey, when you're here for 30 years <laughs> and win 11 games six times and that stuff, I'll let you pick. Have you, how many games have you won? <laughs> Yeah, he has no answer. I feel like Four Adrian Wojnarowski could, well, could just dominate. Yeah. Woj could just dominate recruiting. Does he fit? I, mean, I love Woj, but does it like Shams fit the KSO brand a little bit more? Shams? Oh, yeah. I'm you undefeated know? against yeah. our competition. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll give you that. But, K- I mean, if we get – I'm not listening to him. But KSO is like 100 and 0. If we get Woj, I would take him. Yes. But um, he said we're 100 no. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. Um, I get, I get, yeah, the answer is, of course. specified networks. So – Flando. Flando. Okay, I agree. That's certainly – hey, Dallas Cat 7 – he says, score predictions for tomorrow's game. He wrote lulls in parentheses, <laughs> which Ugh. might be suggesting he thinks it's not going to be close. But let's do it. Let's go around. Let's Can take I a say second. mine that we give, talked about earlier? Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I yeah. your hypothetical <laughs> yep. score My prediction. hypothetical game and prediction, and they loved it. I hope you guys do too. Kansas scores three points. Yeah. Kansas State scores five. Five three Baseball cats. Score five three cats for 40 minutes. KU's going to score the first three. K-State's going to go on a five-point binge in the final minute. KU hits <laughs> Devon Dotson three, the opening possession, and no baskets no by baskets either team. The rest of the way. I bet Bram would be a good, a good so atmosphere. What was it? Cardier Jada free <laughs> throws? I said two Cardier and Jada free throws and a banked in Mike McGurl triple. That's to how win you it. win it. So, D.Y., that's why he's moving on to Ohio yep. State. He's that checked out. But that's, uh-huh. that's the prediction he gives us. <laughs> Flanders. I need you're our basketball guy. I need yeah. I need some actual thoughts. Okay, okay. Can you, I know yeah. you weren't ready for this, but talk me through. No, I, I mean I mean I had a feeling it yeah. might come up yeah. on the podcast. Yeah. I mean, I know <laughs> people are so excited. I mean, they are. Yeah, here's the deal. I mean, this KU team is playing as good as they played all year long. Uh, Azabuki's been playing out of his mind recently. I don't think K State has an answer for him. I mean, could they keep it close? I think that that's possible at least for some of the game. But I still see like a ten point margin. K State's losing is just not enough. I mean, not enough. K State. I mean, you, you've seen it all year. K State has not done enough on offense. It'd have to be a miracle game for them, where all the shots they've been missing go in. And even then, I still think it's a close game. Yeah. Um, and I don't think that magic is going to happen. So my prediction is going to be seventy-seven to sixty-four. Yeah. Kansas. I don't have. Kicks I'm not going to add to it again. because all I'm going to do is change it by two points and sound try to sound smart. Yeah. That was a good answer. Uh, simple question. This is Dallas Cat Seven, and I'm gonna add, go back to Dy for this. He says simple question. I'm not criticizing his his simple question. 
He says, do you think we go internal or external on the new DC? Now, DY just told you, you know, you didn't know this. You weren't listening to the pod, Dallas Cat 7, when you're asking your questions. But DY just talked about Klanderman being maybe his choice. So I don't want to put words in your mouth. I'll just add some color to this. Um, something I shared on the board. I do know or believe from pretty good sourcing that they, they have scheduled at least external interviews. I don't have names to give you. Other, I mean, DY has done more on this 10 times over than I have. So I'm not trying to steal any thunder. I do believe they will interview external candidates. But that said, D.Y., what do you think? Do you think they go, this is different. Last one was, what should they do? What do you think, internal or external? I mean, that, that they would do the, go through the entire process like this when you're kind of a little bit shook for time with spring football around the corner. It makes me think they would only do this if they're really considering it out and outside higher. So, I mean, I have a tough time with it. I think that the, the – I still think the most likely is internal Joe Klanderman, but I don't think that they're just doing this for show because I think it would be easier for them to say, wrap it up quick, Klanderman's right. Klander, coordinator, three footballs in yeah. two weeks. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly, exactly. I'm going to go to a basketball question now for you, Flando. This is from Bear Jones 12. It's a long, it's a long question, so I'm going to ask you kind of the first part of it. It's a good question. What do you think has been the biggest divergence? I don't think you know what that means, but you know, just listen to the context clues for the rest of it, and you'll figure it out. <laughs> what has been the biggest divergence between what is what appeared what it appeared Bruce Weber expected from his team before the start of the year and now the actual results? So, what do you think the biggest gap is? You know, that's causing from what he expected, what we expected, what the you know people expected to what's actually happened. You know, it's something that I think Bruce is laid off talking about as much as he used to, but I think the answer is he expected. And hoped, and he probably in the back of my mind thought that this is a lot to ask, but either X or Cardi was going to take a Barry Brown mentality right. and lead this team to many victories on his own if he had to. Right. That hasn't happened, and I think that's what's fallen short. I mean, the inexperience, I think he knew those guys were going to hit a wall or you know right. uh, struggle throughout the year, but I think he expected that his – I think he still expected this team to possibly be able to – at least make an NIT or a NCAA run. I think yep. every coach thinks that going into a year, you know, you just have that no belief. Doubt. And no, and I really believe he, in his mind, he said it early on, he, he needed that Barry Brown type guy. He hasn't said it as much lately, but I think now he's just kind of, you know, going with the flow and, and protecting his players right. as well and not bashing them every time out. But I think that's what he's missing is a guy that is going out time and time again like Barry Brown did last year, even when Dean Wade was injured and winning games by himself, really. The only thing I'll add is it's similar to what I uh, KSO today a few days when I talked about, you know, whose fault is it, what kind of stuff. Um, I, that's a great answer. I would have said the exact same thing. But the people hear that and say it's blaming the players, it's not. No. It's uh, The coaching staff is always responsible. Yeah. If the question says, what was the biggest difference between what you hoped to see and didn't happen, it's going to be play on the court. Yep. We're not going to say, I thought Bruce would call horns more as a set play. Yep. We're not going to say, I thought they're going to play zone 40% of the time. So you have to talk about players. That's what it is. The coach is so responsible for them. Mm-hmm. If you want to point a finger, point it at Bruce Weber, point it at Chris Flowery. It's their program. But, yes, I think the biggest difference was guys like Cardi and Mack and, and X yep. did not become all Big 12. Potentially, he's one or two of them yep. type performers. Yeah, that was kind of took the – where I was going good. to the end, I said – You're going your anyway. three best players were supposed to be Cardi, Mack, and X. And, and they might still be. They probably still well, are. Maybe, well, maybe not Mack. But those three were supposed to be your best players, and all three underperformed this year. Yep, well said. Yep. This is going to be back to DY. AMS3399 says – can you talk for 45 minutes or more on football? Yeah. Will, will you? <laughs> is the question. Yeah. We might. How long are we right now? Uh, 13 minutes. Oh. 14 minutes. Yeah. And at least at least four or five of it have been about basketball. So yep. we really, in reality, have only talked football for like six or seven uh-huh. minutes. 40 more. So, D.Y., if you can get 40 minutes on this question, I'd appreciate it. What needs to happen for K-State to win nine games or more this year in football? Got to score more points. Oh, I know just, that. I know that's a no, simple yeah, answer, but yeah, I'll give yeah. it's kind of the weeds. Yeah. Their offense wasn't effective enough. You're this right, past though. Year. They do. Yeah, they won eight games. The game that's they lost. great. Yeah, but they won eight games, and I know some of the stats didn't bear out completely. But third down defense saved them. They won eight games because I think their defense overachieved. I don't think their offense did. Right. Think about the games they lost, and I don't have it in front of me, but I mean, special teams. They scored in the twenties against Texas. They scored in the twenties against West Virginia. Right. They scored. I mean. And, and, the, and the special teams kept them in those games, yeah. kind of too. They have like uh, six they always special scored teams. What, they scored what? I don't have it. I mean, so it was like a month ago, but they didn't score. They didn't get the twenties in the Liberty Bowl, and they got a special teams touchdown in that game too. I mean, so I think it's, that's well said. It's a simple answer. Yeah. Would you add anything? No. So I mean, well, yeah, give, me something, give me something different. What's something else? That, if K State's going to win nine next year, nine's a lot. Uh-huh. Yeah, that's nine and three, man. 
What do they got to do? What are some things that maybe you want to see to get to nine wins or more next year? I want to see Skylar Thompson take the jump that I mean I think a lot of people want him to take, but don't know if he can. Is being right. a you know top three, top two quarterback in the league, and uh, I think that. I, that's my answer. Yeah, a quarterback that yeah, gets want, it done and gets into that nine wins. Yeah, you want more for the process, which is great. Yep. But we both say they, they got to be better on offense. Yeah. Right, yep. same thing. Yep. So, hey, uh, you guys just talk some quarterback stuff. And the next question yep. from AMS3399 stays on quarterback play. Do you think we will throw the ball more early in the season since quarterback and wide receiver seem to be a relative strength in comparison to the O-line running game? So I'll just I agree. I just want to sound smart too. You got all your starters back. Oh, see Skylar Thompson. Yep. How many other than Dalton Schoen, and that's a big loss. But your next probably five or six pass catchers are back. You lose all five starting offensive linemen. You lose your top two running backs. So fact of the matter is, at least on paper, way more experienced at quarterback receiver. Do you lean on that early in the year, DY? I do not actually. Do the opposite. Do the opposite. Yep. I think the offensive line needs work. If they run a 18 drive, even if all 18 are runs, that's good for that offensive line in a. Grow, growth and, and stuff of that nature. I, I think as the season goes on, they'll, they'll diversify the offense more, especially since they're going to want to appeal it to some of the athletes that they are recruiting, whether it be a wide receiver or a quarterback with Jake Rubley. I think you want that stuff to look a little bit prettier when they're watching, of course. Yeah. But at the end of the day, I think to start the year, they want to get the offensive line in a groove. And I think to do that, you might want to run a little bit. You do the same thing, or you come out slinging it around? I'm coming out slinging around. Yeah. You know? <laughs> I'm with you, why, but I, I like your fun answer. Yeah, I mean, I also think, you know, I know it, it question marks of what it's going to be like when he's featured, but I think a Joshua Youngblood featured uh, receiver is going to be exciting to watch uh, to see a full year of that. So, And a quicker way to put away some of the – North Dakotas, Buffaloes, and Vanderbilts. I think those are the three. Yeah, is by running the ball. Probably. No doubt. Put them away. Sling it around. Bring in guys <laughs> that, that haven't played. I would, if you guys, if we were working on a staff together, you would be the running game coordinator. I'm looking at Derek, and you'd be the passing game coordinator, and you'd sit down and play each time. Yours would say four or five verts every time, and DUIs would at least have some variation. So we'd probably call a lot more running plays yep. because I couldn't run five verts. <laughs> Six times nope. a drive. <laughs> you know? Anyway, this is from KSU Burke 54, who does have a YouTube channel that's got, I think, near a thousand subscribers. And he didn't ask me to do this, but I, I think it's. I, uh, I, I subscribe to it. It's like Burke, Burke 54 Comics or Burke Nasty 50. Type in Burke Comics on YouTube, B E R K. You'll find it. Hit subscribe. Help him out. It's not that big of a problem. What's he do? He, like, un unveils comics and, like, he has to do comics and, like, openings and stuff like yeah. that. You know? I mean, He's I don't got care. a following. That's My awesome. son watches it more than he watches ours. Anyway, he got saw us. subscribers than John Kurtz. <laughs> oh, <geez. laughs> Kurtz. Hey. Oh, hey. Kurtz. Hey. Kurtz. I, 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 oh, I, my God. I, did, I had nothing to do with it. I didn't Kurtz, it was all me. They didn't know. He's Come not, for me if you ask. Kurtz is not I mean, listening. I think Flanders is clearly just very aggressive. He's almost cursed twice. He just took a shot at Kurtz, who's I been still here the you, last Kurtz. two weeks with us. I still love you, Kurtz. Um, well, maybe you show up and I don't dog you. <laughs> he's not listening. Uh, I, hope, I hope he's not. I'll let uh, him know to listen. No, it's fine. It's fine. It's I'll fine. let him know to go to. He asked what I ordered at Taco Bell. First question. I had. I ordered. Two crunchy tacos with no lettuce and a Doritos Locos taco with no lettuce. Because all three together are still only 480 calories. Yeah, they're bad calories. But that's not bad. But then Red realized, oh, they have Doritos tacos. So I had to give him my Doritos taco. <laughs> I gave him my whole Doritos taco, ate my other two ones, and one of his cheese roll-ups. That's what I had there. Mr. Burke asks us, how ridiculous are the people that are calling for Bruce to be fired this year after winning the conference? He says, hashtag Bruce forever. Like, I understand, you know, the question... Uh, and I'm not trying to give you like an answer that's annoying, uh, but uh, be that guy. But I'm trying really hard not to tell people how they should think. I think people should be allowed to think how they want to think. Uh, I don't think Bruce Weber should be fired. I think he is safe in his job and is right to be right now. But hey, man, if somebody feels that way, uh, yeah, you know, more. I, I don't know, more power to him. You know, and I'm sure there's there is reason to think that. Although I personally don't agree with it. It's Finders ridiculous. Said, it's okay. ridiculous. Finders, it really, I love it. Yeah. I, 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 yeah, I mean. I, I understand being frustrated about this horrible, horrible year. I'm finishing last in the, the Big 12. Sucks, yeah. No one would be calling for Bob Huggins' job in West Virginia if he won the Big 12 championship last year yeah. and then was last place. In, in, I, yeah. mean, I mean, yes, there'll be fans out there, I think, it's in, you know, that do that, but I still think they're ridiculous too. I mean, you've, you had the success that you've had the past seven years that Bruce Weber has had. I mean, yeah, we've talked about it before. I mean, off, off mic. 
his lows are low, but his highs are, are good for K State basketball. I mean, right. Still, even in, even with the lows that he has, this program, I think right now, this program is top three with Kansas, Texas Tech, and K State. I think those are the top three programs in Big Twelve basketball right now. So, I I don't think you can just get rid of Bruce Weber after after a Big Twelve championship and going last. I think it's got to be you know another horde horde season to yeah. even t- start talking about it in my opinion do but I, I do realize people have their opinions sure and that's I, that I know. Hey, but, and I'm glad you said that because yeah. it's not a very interesting podcast for me to sit here and say whatever you think is fine <laughs> you know so I'm glad you said that honestly yeah. and, if yeah. people, and if people ask your opinion yeah it's fine to share you know, I'm, not, I'm think, not trying to be a big jerk about <laughs> it yeah. yeah I think all what Bruce does is make the following years harder for him in terms of expectations right. no doubt no doubt yep. DY completely out of context question if I were to ask you again if you think it'll be an internal promotion or an external promotion for, for a D coordinator, what would your guess be? Heavily on the internal. Okay, I just wanted to ask again for clarification <laughs> there. That wasn't my accident if you're listening. I think that's good. Right. Someone might right. have missed that earlier, and now they're catching right, it for right. the they second might, time exactly. around. Exactly, they caught it the second time around. That's, it's good to know that I was I might have been right earlier. Right, I think you were. You know, Good job. Um, let's talk through this as a group. Next year's starting five. Let's just say for argument's sake, that Cartier Jada returns. And I'm okay. not trying to flip-flop. I'm not predicting that. But, I we, think that's... but we've done a million projections without him. We've talked yeah. about him. So let's do one with, with him yep. back on the team next year. That's not us flip and flopping and saying he's coming back. In fact, I would guess probably still not. But it's more interesting how to do one with Cartier yep. on the team. Starting five, top of your head, with Cartier on the team next year. David Sloan, Cartier Jada, uh, De, uh, um, Dejuan Gordon, mm-hmm. Montavious Murphy, and then Casey Asiago, which I think I saw that say. same exact lineup by someone ran, uh, random on Twitter. Yeah, and I thought I saw it and was like, yeah, that's probably what I would guess too right now. I think if you, I would say the exact same one. So I'm gonna give Dy the tougher job. Cardi's back in this scenario. You have to change one of those five. If it's not, if it's not Sloan, Cardi, Dejuan, Monty, Asiago, who's the five? You have to change one of those starting five. Maybe I. Uh Take Iziagu out, put Monte at the five. I like it. Go mm-hmm. small. So Selton, Miguel. Selton, Miguel, Don Miguel, Don We yeah. know, some yeah. new recruit. Yep. I don't think it would be Mike in that scenario. I think he would still come out. I that's an interesting thing to do, yeah. But if Cardi's not back, I think, I think that's, Mike becomes perhaps yeah. the next star. Yeah. But I think what I said is probably the only alternative you could really make to that. Unless, I would think so. Unless you go Nigel Packer or Sloan. But. Which may happen. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But, hey, we can't get 45 minutes of football talking by answering this question at length. So we got to move on. Uh, Burke also says, not a question, but a statement. That's fine. Statements are fine. He thinks K-State goes 2-1 and one the rest of the regular season and wins the first game of the Big 12 tournament. So assuming they lose to Kansas. Oh, then, that, that, then we're going well, to the NCAA Kansas, tournament, right? baby. Well, and then, uh, well they got to win the first. It's the first game. <laughs> but it's, So if they win, that means they would beat Iowa State, beat Oklahoma State, and then beat probably what, TCU on, what, is that Wednesday in Kansas yep. City? 2-1 yeah. and one with the win over KU, I think. Right, right. I mean, <laughs> I mean hey, you can take it. Ton 25 has a few different questions, so I'm going to break them up here a little bit. How does this affect recruiting? I assume this is uh, Scotty Hazelton news. Um, DY, does it impact recruiting, and how does it? As long as the hires are made timely, I think it's fine. I don't, yeah, probably I, not I, even Hazelton is not a really a serious – I want to say serious, not an act of recruiting. Correct. And that, and I don't want to put words in your mouth, but I'll say my own words when I say that. That's not a shot. Like, he did he did it what he was asked to do. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, don't you think? I mean, his yeah, job. Yeah, no, he did his right. job. Yeah. I don't think that they, anyone was extremely bothered that he probably right. recruited less than everybody else. I don't think they were, you're correct. I don't think they were intending to use him in that manner. No, yeah. they were not. Yeah. And he would, uh, and, um, he would probably agree with this, and I, and I think he admitted to this. But he kind of wore it like a badge of honor, too, right. because he doesn't really like recruiting. Right, right, right. He'll <laughs> no, do he's it. He's a Spartan, and, and I'm excited about it. Oh, yeah, yeah, get those two star recruits. No, it's kidding. Tom, 20, <laughs> Tom 25 asks, any way we win Saturday? No. No, I mean, magic <laughs> oh, magic, magic yeah. in the air. Well, I did have a 5-3 to three Magic caps. has to be in the air. You guys are jerks. Yeah, caps. there's a way to win. That's 5-3. I mean, 60% from behind the arc. Uh, clip at least ch- ch- <laughs> ch- chances of a brawl I, zero yeah none I mean if well, it, if, okay. if D'Souza was playing what's more likely K-State win or a brawl K-State win or right? a what or a brawl a fight or a K-State likely? win a win yeah <laughs> if D'Souza was playing I'd say a brawl <laughs> oh man <laughs> hey 
Why don't people just refer to KU as a D to SU? Because they letters. cheat. It's a, it's, yeah, it's, it doesn't roll off the tongue. You know, yeah. <laughs> Bunch of cheaters. Uh, Burpee Wildcat. Yeah, Burpee Wildcat. Make sure I get Burpee that right. Burpee Wildcat. Burpee. Asks, how much will the basketball team need to improve next year for Weber's job to be safe? Or do you think you'll get two more seasons? I'll answer this first just because yeah. I get these questions. And I've seen other people. I don't want to, you know, I, I would like to credit them for saying it. It's never this simple. You don't go on a blackboard and say, here's the line. And if you don't win this many games, you're fired. There's always a million things that go into it. And that won't be the case for Bruce Weber either. So I can't answer how much. There's not a, there's not a correct answer to how much. I understand the question. I get why it's being asked. But there's not going to be a 18 wins, NIT, or you're fired. That's not how it works. How much better, though, the question is going to just simply be, for him, oh, let, me, let me back up and say it a different way. For him to be at risk of being fired next year, this year would have to repeat. Would you agree with that? Yeah. yeah. And there's still possibility in that, that scenario that he right. wouldn't get fired because. Right. Can I ask yeah. a question or a yeah. different yeah. one? Yeah. Yeah. Because, again, hey, Burpee Wildcat, it's not a bad question. Yeah. Like, this is a no, good question. Absolutely. Yeah. Everyone good asks it this way. And I'm too, sorry yeah. if I'm being a jerk about it. I'm just saying, like, people still, want. Yeah, because uh, there's a lot of hear, context. Right. People want to hear black and white answers to these. And, injuries happen. And, right. Injuries. Do, they, do you get hot late? Do you get hot early? Do you beat KU twice? Do you not? I mean, do you lose every game by one? Right. Do you lose every game by one? Do you get blown out? I mean, like, there's. I, now I will say, if they go two and sixteen in the Big Twelve this year, next year, I think you're probably going to get fired. Yeah. You know, I mean, I'm yeah. just, I will say, I'll say that that'll probably yeah. happen. Right. But I can't give you a baseline of what has to happen for him to keep his job because that's not really even fair to do to him. Right. No one, no one wants a job where one year off of winning a championship, now all of a sudden you're like, if you can't do this, you're fired. Especially when expectations going in nine, right. nine ninth in the Big Twelve. Right. I mean. Right. I bet you next year they're not picked ninth in the Big 12 again. It's possible. Maybe 10th. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, honestly. I'll yeah. ask it a different way, yeah. and it might not be a whole lot better. What number of, like, league wins would you feel comfortable about the trajectory of the program yeah. going forward? That's a, yeah. I mean, again, similar. I'm going to give you an answer. Like, yeah. similar answer. All It matters who you be, blah, blah, yeah. blah, blah, blah. But let's, let's just say, let's just throw a scenario out there. Let's say they, th- they have a paper soft non-conference schedule and they win 10 non-conference yeah. games. And then they go six and twelve in the Big Twelve to for 16, 17 wins, win one game of the Big Twelve tournament. And let's say that they're not getting blown out a bunch. A couple of those wins are against good teams. And I know that now. Listen, if you're listening to this right now and saying that's not good enough for me, that's okay. That's your disagree. opinion. Yeah. That's fine. You can disagree with me and say that's not good enough. But if you're asking me, I would throw it around six or seven wins in the Big Twelve. That's, that's where that's my ballpark would be. Seven, too. seven popped in my head right yeah. when it got asked. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah, and, he, and if you don't agree with my opinion either, something that's also worth knowing is K-State's not asking my opinion. So don't worry if I say yeah. a number that's not high enough for you because Gene Taylor's probably not sending me a DM saying, Matt, was that enough? You know, yeah. So it's going to be your opinion just, just as valuable as mine as a listener. For sure. if, if well, they got to seven, I would feel comfortable that they took a good enough step forward. But that's also without knowing how they finished, who they beat, and that matters. Yeah, and I think on top of all that too, the next year after that you're getting Dejuan Montavious as juniors – and then those other two, other four off of uh, freshman years. like yeah. so. And that's probably more concrete. And I'm sure yeah. you can probably say it. That's when you know you have to be in the NCAA tournament. Right. Yeah. I agree. Yeah, yeah, no, no I, I, I agree. Yeah, yeah at some point. And, and, yeah, at some point you yeah. do have to. I'm not, And I'm not saying you never get expectations. Yeah. And, and you didn't say that. But yeah. if, don't read between the lines of what I'm saying. I'm not saying you never expect that of a coach. Right. I'm just saying, boy, I don't want to work at a job where after one bad year, they're like, dude, I mean, I come to UDY after a couple bad recruiting updates or notebooks and say, hey, man, if you don't produce 52 next year and they're not just going to fire you, you might you might look around and you might be right to look around. But you already He rubbed his eye. He already is. And that's what a good thing is, though, is uh, our fans don't dictate our, our – Yeah, that's true. <laughs> CSA 50, what are realistic expectations for Dejuan Gordon, Antonio Gordon, and Montavious Murphy now that you've seen them at this level? Best case for each, worst case for each, likely for each. So to wrap that all up, he's asking us, project the careers of Dejuan Gordon, Montavious Murphy, and Antonio Gordon. Best case, worst case, what we think. Let's all start with Dejuan Gordon. And I will say best case for me is Barry Brown. My best case was still going to be first team all conference. This year kind of put a little bit of a damper on that, but it hasn't changed for me. Yeah, I think, I think Barry Brown. I, I would say even a – a little better than Barry yeah. Brown because he has the attributes to be, like as far as his length and his ability and yeah. stuff like that. But it's hard to to even match the production that Barry Brown right, put up. Right, so right, you know, I would say you know, that, and I would say this. Good. You know, it concerns me a little bit the most about yeah. Dejuan Gordon and reading there. His basketball IQ is not what I thought it would be. 
Yeah, he's yeah. No, I don't. Uh, he, he's there's certain things he's very very adept at understanding where the rebounds are going to come off and that kind of thing. But there's some other things not as much. Now let's go worst case, and I'm going to say, and I'm this is not this is not to knock this player, but I think the worst kind of career I see him having is a Mike McGurl type career where McGurl got really hot late as a freshman. He destroyed Creighton. And I would have thought by now McGurl's going to, you know, that kind of stuff. And he's still a good player. He might be a starter next year. He's a valuable piece. But I could see a scenario where Dejuan Gordon, despite all the hype, never becomes more than a sixth man yep. for a good team. That'd be my worst case. It's hard for me to disagree with that. I mean, I was trying to think of a good comparison. And, I mean, once you said that, I, I, I can't help but agree. So yeah. that's my answer, too. Yeah. Worst case, I still think it's a multi-year starter. Yeah, you still see so higher than mine a little bit, you think. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, Montavious Murphy, same thing. Best case. You don't have to say player. You, like, we're all doing it different ways. That's great. So I'll go last this time. Yep. Oh, sorry. You, Montavious Murphy. Best case, what is he? <laughs> Draymond Green. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I, mean, I mean, college. Yeah, college, college, Green, college yeah. Draymond Green. A guy who's going to do everything for you, put in uh, max effort, be able to. I, I do think. Guard all five spots. Yeah, guard all know, five spots. Yeah. I think also, Blue best guy. case scenario, could be a really good three point shooter as well. I mean,. If we're talking about his peak ability, I think that that's something that could come into play. Not like Dean Wade level ability, right. but you know, just a tick under that. Um, and I think he could be a really scary player. Yeah, uh, probably like third team All Conference. Yeah, uh, I would go similar to Flanders. You know, like I'm trying to give a college K State players like that to throw into you. Maybe a, another guy. I hate knocking people on the show, but maybe like a rich man's Shane Southwell. Yeah. You know, yep. kind of a point forward yep. who can pass the ball, hit some threes, guard a bunch of different spots. He's not – it's not a great comparison. They're not even similar players. I understand that. But if you're asking, like, quality of player, I could see him being, like, remember when Shane Southwell's, like, yep. at his best and, like, trending upwards, like that kind of player. Yep. But I love the Draymond Green comparison. Yeah. I now, think uh, – he said third team. I think second team. I would say a little higher than third. I agree. Yeah, it could yeah. possibly get into first yeah. first team if he's American, really, really good. American. But, yeah, yeah All-American, yeah. I will say, as far as worst case, I don't have a great answer for this. I'm going to think of one. But to me, and maybe you guys can disagree, I think he has the highest floor of any of them. Like, I think, you know what I mean? Like, now you yeah, – maybe you might just agree with Derek because you have Dejuan, worst case, as a multi-year starter. So do you think Dejuan's got a higher floor? I think I, I think we'd all say he has a higher ceiling than Monty. But do you no. think his floor is higher than Monty's too? No, I think Monty's floor is still higher than Dejuan's. Dejuan yeah. is a multi-year starter, but that's, you know, still being more of a role player, yeah. I would say. And Monty's going to be multi-year He already is. Yeah, you know, but so Monty's, already, starter. Yeah. Monty's yeah. already going to be a multi-year starter. But I, here's my, here's what I said about Monty, and you guys know us. I've told you. I think what Monty is now is what Monty will be every single Probably. year. I don't know if he's going to get a, a lot better. He'll be a lot more impactful, but I don't know if he's a lot better basketball player. So it's four, probably third team all Big 12. Right. <laughs> so but, I think he is. It's four to seal going to say to me. But in that in this whole case, it kind of all plays together. If he doesn't get significantly better, his body will get better. He'll be conditioning. He'll get, we know he'll get better. But, yes, I don't know that his game's going to just evolve into this different player. I don't nope. think it will. But a guy like Draymond, for example, looks way better on good teams. Yep. You know, so if Monty was on a good team, Yep. Doing that thing, he'd probably look pretty good. I think Monty's ability down low to finish too is, it's kind of underrated. Like he's yeah. able to like for his size. I think over bigger guys, I just think he's an all-around player. I mean, he's uh, got a, you have a worst case for him. You want to throw out there? I mean, I mean, the if you have nothing to add, don't answer. Just yeah, answer. Nothing to add. Okay, Antonio Gordon. Uh, I will say worst case, Brian Patrick. Yep. Um, for him. Worst case, not here. Right. Worst case, not on. Yeah. Yep. I think best case, uh, Nino Williams. Yeah. Something like that. That's a, yeah. that's a really yeah. good answer. Yeah. yeah. Someone who can maybe, Nino was yeah. more of that like mid range type. Yes. Yeah, but, but maybe. Six, six man yeah. starter type. Yep. Yeah. And yeah. actually hit corner threes and, you know, be right. able to. Yeah. I think that's that's your guy. Right. Now, Nino, exactly. Now, you're not, they're not identical players. Yeah. Antonio's taller. Nino yep. is more mid range. Antonio yep. shoots threes. Yep. I understand all that. But Just yeah, saying production wise. Yes. Yeah. A guy like that. A fringe, fringe starter, very nice six man, uh -huh. that kind of player. My best case scenario is probably not starter. It's probably bench role player. Spot up shooter. Yeah. 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 Yep. I agree. I agree. Let's go to Nate. Four, five, seven, three. Question four, Flanders. What are the chances we can land Donovan Williams and Carlton Lingard or just one of them? So, to reward this, tell me where K State stands in your opinion, just in general, Donovan Williams and Carlton Lingard. Well, um, with Donovan Williams, I mean, I both both are going to be hard to get. Both are hot commodities. Um, I'll start with Donovan Williams because he's number one on their list, 
and you are going to be battling against mostly Oklahoma State and Texas A&M. Kansas is involved, but they're not as serious as the other three. It's K-State, Oklahoma State, and Texas A&M. Um, so I think the chances of getting Donovan are a little higher than getting Lingard because yeah. I, I think location I is a key, too, for Donovan. Um, you know, committed to at Nebraska. We talked about this before, uncommitted. I still think it's important for him to be close to home, close to family. Um, and going to Oklahoma State or a and just further, I mean, Oklahoma State also has a really good recruiting class, even better than K-State. Right. So it's even harder to think that Donovan would join that and not K-State's. I agree with that part. Yep. I, I wanted to pitch in what I know yep. about that. Donovan Wade's You one, actually do have some, yeah. yeah. One of the reasons why he departed from the Nebraska class was he was really upset that they were taking Teddy Allen because yep. yeah. he has a big-time desire to be the kind right of guy away. who yeah. wants to be spotlighted. And if you're next to Kate Cunningham, it's going to be tough to do. Yeah. And with, yeah. And without us, you know, saying names because we can't, we're pretty. We're, that was a concern for K State at some point too. Is how do you have Selton Miguel and Donovan Williams on the roster at the same time? That's something they've settled and they feel comfortable doing, and it's why they're recruiting both. Yep. Selton signed, and Donovan's good about it. But it, that is part. That is part of the situation with him. Um, we know it was a part of the, at K State. It was a part at Nebraska, and it could be part of it other elsewhere. Too. So I think so move on to Lingard. Yeah. Yeah. Well, if I have one more thing about Donovan. No. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. Yes. I would say yeah. So I think. K-State's got the leg up on Oklahoma State. a and I'm not as sure. I think it's a little closer as far as that goes. Um, They're but, farther away. But I do think, I mean, you brought it up in the press conference asking Bruce. I think K-State can sell to him, hey, we like to play, especially when X is gone. Right. We like to play multiple guards and one center. Right. So if you want to join that and be a part of that, we've gotten, you know, I did that at Illinois and got to a national yep. championship. Right. So Absolutely. you can sell that. Corey Evans of Rivals is reporting – that Bruce Weber will see Donovan Williams again on tomorrow, Saturday. Saturday, well, Saturday after the game. He's heading up there. It's the second time your yep. phone has given us something valuable to say on here. The first one they may have caught 20 minutes ago. <laughs> you know, but He's heading um, up there. We had yeah. that on the board. I had that on the board. I uh, believe you. Yeah, yeah, just making sure. No, I'm not. Rather, we, <laughs> I got tagged. Listen, yeah. let's be honest. We'd rather Corey Evans got the credit than you. Oh, you're right. <laughs> okay. well, me too. I would too. <laughs> no, you don't. You won. <laughs> Carlton Lingard, for the love of God, tell uh, us about Carlton. him. Carlton. Um, he's a center. We know. Yeah. <laughs> Juco out of Texas. We know who he is. They're asking Juco out Chance of Texas. So I think. Get him? Do they get him? I don't. I don't know. I mean, that's that's the. It's it's tougher. I think than Donovan He's Williams. Less likely. Less Perfect. likely. That's all I need. We'll move on. Yeah. Good answer. I don't think they get him. It's Derek L fifty eight. Uh, not. Yeah. It's my birthday. To drink a <laughs> not beer. Who? Uh, Flanders is on beer too. D Y not had one, so you don't care about his birthday. Man, I I, I like this. I, again, I'm just not going to answer this. And if one of you guys wants to, go ahead. But I, uh, first question, how concerned are you about the recent article of President Myers in terms of uni- university fundraising? Fundraising, I'm ah, just not going to talk about it. You know what I mean? Like, I, I, I get the yeah. it, it impacts K-State. I understand that. But I think I immediately I start talking political and funding. And I don't – I'm not in I, – I have no – I don't have the right to discuss this. I don't know who yeah. about it. So – I think there's a semblance of concern on my part. I don't yeah. know enough about it to be extremely educated and sit here and have a diatribe about it. But I say, I would say that I think it's rich coming from President Myers. And if he's listening to this, hey, I'm sorry, but I think that you should probably turn that figure around and point it yourself. I mean, I mean, any any problem we talk about when we talk about Bruce Weber's basketball program, at the end of the day, it's the person at the top, and that's not us. That's not us passively attacking him now for just answering the question. But yeah, man, if you're going to say that. You, I, I'll assume he started with himself. I guess we'll start there. I'm not even getting Flanders a chance to touch this question. <laughs> um, next question. Do you envision that Kansas State could ever be in the conversation for a national championship? Or are the best teams, Bama, LSU, Clemson, Ohio State, etc.? This is a football question, obviously. Too far ahead of everyone else recruiting revenue for a realistic chance for any non blue blood team to catch up. I'll give a short answer, then you guys can give longer ones. The answer is yes. I mean, twice in my lifetime, K-State's been within a play or two of playing for the national championship. In football, I know the game has changed. In basketball, twice in the last 10 years, they've been a basketball game from going to the Final Four. So the the correct answer is yes. If you're asking how likely it is, I'd be very concerned with all the stuff that we're talking about. You you first. Yeah, you from like. a financial – all the stuff we talk about, financial stuff, it makes it really complicated, really yeah. difficult. But Bruce Weber was in Kansas State were a whisker away from the Final Four two without, years without ago. Without Dean Wade. Without Dean Wade. Right. And – and I know this doesn't make it easier, but it gives them more of an opportunity than they would typically have if the playoff, and I think it will, I don't know how soon, if it gets expanded to eight teams. Right. 
then I mean Kansas State is two games away from a national title just by getting in, just by right. making it to the Big Twelve Championship, just by being the second best team in the league. They don't even have to be the the best team in no. the league during the season. You'd be the second best and just beat the best team on one day. Yep. And guess what? Kansas State just beat Oklahoma. They won a Big Twelve six years ago. So six years ago, or seven, seven years yeah. ago, or it's eight, 2012. Uh, 2012, so yeah, eight, eight now, I guess. Okay, yeah. within the but last decade. But then they were one win from playing for the national championship, you know, one, against an unranked Baylor team. Right. Yeah. So it's difficult, but the eight-game playoff puts them on a stage. Yeah. I mean, it's yeah, not impossible. Different. I mean, yeah. that's all I can say. I, I mean, and again, not, yeah. I, I get the question. I'm not. I have this weird tick in my head. Like this is a question I ask myself. I ask myself this all the time in my regular everyday thinking. Like, oh, is that, do I think K State will ever win one? So I get the question, and I'm just being super like analytical. Yeah, of course there's a chance. Yes, but I do understand the purpose of the question, and I do think it's getting. I do think it's getting harder. I will. I, 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 I think the playoff makes it easier in, in theory, and I don't disagree. But I think the money. Um, what's the word? The gap in money between the haves and the even, it's getting even have nots. I mean, because I'm not saying K State's a have not because they're not, but I mean, like, if you're not in the Big Ten or the SEC, I could throw you in this conversation. You know what I mean? If who's a great, if you're or, well, Oregon, yeah. Nike, but, but I mean, there's so many examples of like good Louis programs or, yeah. that can't compete money wise, so it does make it different. I think yeah. there's probably a bigger gap, definitely a bigger gap in the money. And I think there's probably a bigger gap right now in the caliber of teams that. You know, Kansas State trots out there. Even if they were trotting out, uh, you know, there's a bigger gap than what Kansas State has now than those big schools. LSU, there is a huge gap after the top five. But football is a little bit different where the most talented team often does not always win because it requires so many different pieces. Yeah, no, I, I agree. I think I think K-State has got the ability to win it. I mean, in, in the Big 12, it's tough because the Big 12 is – it's very competitive, so it's always going to be tough in the Big 12. But, I mean, it's like you said, there's always a chance. I mean, yeah, like you said, they beat Oklahoma last year. The, the next question from Bruce for Life asked a specific question about Brian Bell, who is the DB coach at New Mexico State. To be totally honest, he asked our opinion of him. We don't have a big opinion on him. Uh, we will look him up off air and talk about him a lot. He says he coached with Klanerman for Minnesota State for six years. This guy is assuming that Klanerman uh, moves to coach the linebackers and becomes the D coordinator. So long story short, we don't know who that is. That, that, but we'll look him up. We'll talk to you about him. And it is certainly possible that that could be a route they go. Uh, in fact, I mean, D.Y. knows more than we're even saying. But, yeah, I mean. Could be a route they go. But it's something I saw it in here, and I don't know what, where it came from. Just because, let's say, Joe Klanerman does become the defensive coordinator. Yeah. He doesn't have to move away from the safeties. Right. He can still be safeties and right. defense coordinator. I don't, know why, yeah. I don't know why people are stuck on him having to coach linebackers right. just because he's right. defense coordinator. In I fact, think. if he does get promoted to coordinator, he's probably going to stick with the safeties, right. I would think. And, in fact, I think we would say even – we think it's significantly more likely that they hire probably an outside linebacker coach and leave Klanerman at safety. and like the, Exactly. So that's the far most, far most likely outcome right now. Yeah. So, it's pr- in fact, yeah, like, yeah. Hire I would stop talking for it. <laughs> yeah. Hire a linebacker coach, and I'll just rattle off some candidates here off the top of my head. Javon you. DeWitt. Oh, you know what? I appreciate it because Scott Wildcat asked a question earlier, and I was just looking through my phone, and I, and I skipped over it. And he asked – I feel really dumb for it. Yeah, but he asked just candidates for D.C. linebackers. Okay. It's yeah. going to be – I think you're probably looking for candidates for just a linebacker coach without a defensive coordinator title from the way I understand it. Javon DeWitt's probably a candidate. He's at North Carolina. He's working under Mac Brown. He just went there, though, and I think it would take a coordinator title to get him away, so I, I doubt that's a serious one at this point. There's Grant Olson. He was at North Dakota State, and then he went to Indiana State. Now he's back in North Dakota State again. I think he's worked with Lyman, he's coached linebackers. I think that's a possibility. Blake Siler's a name I tossed out there. I don't think you get him without naming him right. a coordinator, so I wouldn't. But Jeremiah Johnson is a linebackers coach in Northern Iowa. He's coached with Kleiman before. Um, recruits the area he's someone if they are just going for a linebackers coach without a coordinator title he's also the defense coordinator in northern iowa but i think that's incentive to leave though is to make it to the power five i think that one was probably be one i'd start to rise up the list of candidates especially since we know it's coming without a coordinator title i'd keep an eye on jeremiah johnson and then there's jamar kane is at oklahoma yep. that they've worked with before yep. but again i don't think he comes without a coordinator race uh, just a random name, I would say, that is zero sourcing to it. This is me literally just throwing a name out. Grant Flanders. Grant Flanders. <laughs> so, but, but one, like, somebody asked me about it, and I thought it was interesting. It was like, what about a guy like Kyle Emanuel? Uh, you know, uh, played for Climate at North Dakota State. Short NFL career, chose to retire early. He did play for the Chargers, of course. We played linebacker for North Dakota State for Climate. 
um, really highly thought of. He took he's out of football. He was on NDSU's like TV broadcast last year. And I, I just we, you always hear names thrown out whenever a D back position opens up. Terrence Newman, you know, it, it always go to straight to former K State players at that position. So I'm doing the same thing with the North Dakota State player. But I wonder if a guy who still would have some name recognition because he was a starting NFL two years ago, he's still a young guy. I, I have no information on him. I have no reason to think they're going after him. But if I was going to just throw a random out that I would like to see Pursuit or interested in, I'd be curious about him. But Points19 asks us, Flanders, what is your favorite beer to celebrate Friday beers? <laughs> what do you have right now? Tell me what you're having right now. I actually don't know. I'd have to okay. ask the server because I wanted a Blue Moon. Right. She gave an option that's close to a Blue Moon. Is it a Wit and Wild? Yep. Okay. That's exactly what I it is. You just look at the names and pick one. I bet you'd get it. But Wit and Wild. That's it. That's how, how is that Wit and Wild? It's really good. I love it. Yeah. I mean, it's probably... Not as good as an 1863 or a uh, Purple Rain they had during uh, the October month. Those two beers are probably my favorite beers, and I'd make them my Friday beer if I had to. So if I gave you a, a crisp $20 bill and said, hey, man, you got to go spend all this at the, at the old beer store. Buy whatever you want. Purple You're spending Rain. it on Purple Rain. Yep. Got it. What's yours? Uh, I'm, not, I'm not a big beer guy I anymore. I know. Yeah. I got away from beer. Beer is where hangovers go to die. I know. Uh, you dude. Yeah. So, uh, uh, big, big, <laughs> big on the bourbon and the whiskey type stuff. You are. <laughs> tell, well, then tell them your favorite bourbon. Jefferson's Ocean. Jefferson's, Jefferson's Ocean. Ocean. H at C. Sounds, Sounds really smooth. fancy. It's a $90 bottle. This so is stupid. why he's taking his job offer. <laughs> yeah. To make exactly. 270000 To make 270000 To be the fourth Ohio State recruiting guy. fourth guys. Ohio like, State recruiting literally, oh, my gosh. Uh, um, at least we get to go to Austin still. Yeah. <laughs> Freeze up money for us. Exactly. I mean, exactly. Like, oh, it's going to be great. Ugh. We'll go to Austin for like six days. <laughs> You're just going to oh pocket God. all that money and not yeah. even hire anybody yeah. else. Yeah, we're not going to hire anybody else. <laughs> nope. Hey, for the record, if anybody's not getting it, we're joking. Like, I mean, DY could leave. Fighters could leave. But in case anybody is listening to this and wondering, I don't Yeah, I'm not. We're here. Not, we're not, here. That's not what's happening. I'm. Yeah. We okay. can talk about it openly, but I'm not leaving. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. What? I said we do talk about it we openly. Do, we do yeah, a lot. We, talk, we yeah. do. Hey, it's good business. Yeah. It's easy when it's just three of you, too, though. No, it is. <laughs> Bruce for Can't life. Hide anything, I tell you that. <laughs> Who, next question. Bruce for life. Who finishes with more combined points per game in basketball next year? Newcomers or returnees? I will say, for the purpose of this question, count Cartier Jada as back. And oh, we'll say Donovan Williams comes to K State. So who's scoring more? Cardi, Mike, Monty. Dejuan, Antonio, and Levi. Combined. Or Selton, Donovan, Nigel. I'll put David Sloan in that first group, too. Selton, Nigel Pack, Donovan Williams, Casey Eziago, Lucas Uki, Davion Brown. Yeah, it's the return. Okay, it's the yeah. returners. Take Cardi yeah. out. Then it's the newcomers, I think. You think so? Yeah. You take the newcomers. I mean, just, just for argument's sake, I over, still don't. I over don't Sloan. Think, you take I don't the newcomers so. over Sloan, Mike, yeah. Dejuan, Monty, Antonio, Levi. Easy Agu. Not Easy a lot of Agu. scores in there. You, no, Easy Agu has a new guy. a newcomer then? I think okay. so. Not I mean, lot, even not, then. I mean, not a lot of scores in there. There's not. I, I think still play think, more minutes. I, yeah, you know, I still so think it's first more, year, yeah, it's yeah. going to be more. I think, I yeah. Newcomers. Newcomers. I like, hey, I like, I like the it. boldness. I, like I, like I, I don't know if it's a lot. Where you see Cardi is the difference in that. And then you go, me and Flanders think it's close, and you flip to newcomers if Cardi's gone. Got it. Got it. K-Style 79. Will he have any tight ends next year to utilize as pass catchers to open up the playbook more? I feel we lacked in the 5 to 10 yard dump passes last year. Uh, so talk about, I guess, to you. What could be different at tight end next year? Do they have options? Can Nick Lenders be a better option in the passing game? Guys coming in, what do you think about the tight ends in the passing game? I'll kind of lay things out in like the best case scenario where they can maybe get the most out of Nick Lenners, you hope. That in a year now he doesn't have to use an entire off season to rehab his knee and right. not actually develop. So maybe he will be in better shape. I know he'll be in better shape. He's going to play at ten pounds less. I'm hearing. Right. So, uh, and so he'll be a little bit quicker. Probably get some of that athleticism back. I don't think he's going to turn a new leaf overnight, but I do think we'll see a new Nick Lenners and maybe a difference in athleticism and quickness just by him not having to rehab his knee for an entire off season. So right. I think that helps a little bit. I think Sammy Wheeler, as long as he d isn't suffering any ill effects from a torn ACL. Now, unfortunately, he's doing what Leonard did last year, and he's going to have to rehab his knee in the entire offseason. But I think, we're, especially if we're talking about athletic pass catchers, Sammy Wheeler is probably the one with the highest ceiling of anyone on the roster, except maybe Will Swanson. We'll see about that. Right, right. Uh, I think that's the only question I had to go from there. Yeah, I'm correct. Uh, Purple South asks, and we've kind of addressed this, but I'll let you address it, kind of answer it specifically, D.Y. 
Um, where does Scotty Hazelton rank as far as recruiting prowess amongst all of the current KSU coaches? Um, the last. Is, right, right, yeah. And again, I hate to say that because... No, it's like, nothing against him. Right, exactly. And if, if he, he tried, he'd be really good no at it. No doubt about honest. it. Right. And he's, his role was to <laughs> coordinate the bejeebers out of the defense, and he did. You yeah. know, so... And then a similar question we already have, and bigger loss, that kind of stuff. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm not trying to gloss over the question. Bigger loss, Hazleton or uh, Chris Dawson. We've already talked about that. Um, okay. You know what? I've seen this name on our board a million times, and I've never tried to say it out loud. So, Mick Garwoo? M-C-G-A-R-W-O-O. Like, he's posting on our board forever. I've, yeah, I've sorry. It. Like, yeah. I mean, I know this yep. poster, but I've never tried to say it out loud. Is that how you would say it? That's how I would. I think okay. so. Uh, more or less, long, another Chris Dawson question. I'll read it all because it's, it's a good question. How highly thought of is Chris Dawson in his profession? Obviously, there's some desire to land him with the likes of Alabama and Oklahoma knocking on his door, but others believe his methods are outdated. I don't think it's a reach to say that Dawson has never built physically imposing football players. Maybe I'm wrong. Is there an opportunity to upgrade this position if he were to leave? Outside of the strength and conditioning coach at North Dakota State, who might be on the short list? So I'll break this up, and I'll ask you the last question first. Do you have names to throw on a strength and conditioning coordinator short list? No. If we're being honest, like, I don't want us to put names on there just because they say we are. No. You know, like, I know that they tried to hire Jim Kramer from North Dakota yep. State away initially before hiring right. Chris Dawson. Right. And I know an easy thing would be maybe to hire Dawson's, one of Dawson's assistants because that's how that's how they make it, too, right. just like coaches. Right. So, yeah, I don't. I, again, I'd love to give no you a names. hot board, but I don't have a hot board of strength and conditioning coaches. Um, is there an opportunity to upgrade this position? Um, I don't know enough because I, I this this is a tough question for me. It's a great question and it's a good thing to discuss and debate here. I th- I don't know if I've ever had Chris Dawson pegged very well. Right. I don't know if I have either. I mean, you know, he's hinting at other, and I don't want to put words in Mick. And hey, also, if you have a pronunciation for me, if I'm saying it wrong, Mick Garwu, please tell me. I don't want to put words in your mouth. But when I see things others believe is message, when I see others, I think you're meaning mess. I feel like you're meaning message board posters. I've never had anybody in the in the profession or in the coaching staff that kind of stuff tell me they think his methods are outdated. They may be, you know, and but I think his methods also changed pretty significantly. It seemed like the it, two coaching staffs. I think maybe so, Bill Snyder. Whatever you try to carry off for Bill Snyder, I will say, kind of. Create, well, we we've heard kind of created an uprising at times right. within the roster. They right. didn't love it. Right. And the it question did, it, didn't, oh. it just seemed much different this past year. So, but I don't know if, how you're supposed to do that. Does he just do what Bill Snyder's supposed to do, even if it's not right? I don't know. Right. And then the question is, it's a tough question. How highly thought of is he? And I'm not. I'm not going to be a jerk with this answer, but you answered it in your question. He's got interest from Alabama and Oklahoma. I mean, two of the we we just a few questions earlier we talked about the yeah. elite programs of the country, and those are two of the best five, and they both have interest in them. So, if you want to know how he's thought of in his profession. You can't get a better answer from me sharing my opinion on him. The best answer you can get is who wants him and two of the best programs in the country do. So he's probably pretty highly thought of. And just as as a group here, and what we've kind of just been, what our opinions have probably been on him, it probably says to a point we've been wrong on him. I think I would have been, yeah. To have that interest. That's why I'm saying I don't know if I've ever had him pegged. I don't know what he is or how he was or what's right and what's not. It's hard We've never for been me allowed to, to speak with them, and that's, and that's not us complaining or yeah. whining. It's fine. It's not. They shouldn't. We shouldn't expect to get an interview. Strength and conditioning coaches, but I'm just being honest. With my answer: I don't know the guy. I haven't met him. Nope. You know, I haven't. I haven't had extensive time walking him conduct workouts. I've heard nothing but praise. Pub, you know, from his from people on his staff and his players. And I know that Oklahoma and Alabama like him, so I can't say anything except for assuming he's highly thought of. I have a question, and then I want to say something, though. Okay. How long has Chris Dawson been the long, strength? Long time. Long time. Since, Since Snyder 2.0. Snyder 2.0. Yep. Yeah. So, Bill Snyder obviously thought he was very good, too. Yep. So, Bill Snyder, Alabama, and Oklahoma think he's what, a great what, team. What, what kept right. him until this year to f- – or has he been getting offers from other schools and stuff? Bill I don't, Snyder. What's, I don't know the answer to yeah. that. You know? I don't know the answer to that either. I, all I will say is, it's like – we haven't been aside for very long, but there was a lot of complaints on him initially. And there were. throughout those first two years, there was a lot of complaints about what he was doing and how things were being run. And then we also heard older players from like probably eight to ten years before that praise what he had done. Right. So there was a three to four year period where he, there was a lot of complaints. Last year, this past year, no complaints. Ray's returned again, Correct. and now he's getting interviewed by Alabama and Oklahoma. So it's a very conflicting and hard thing to approach and explain. And I, you know what? I'm just going to come out and say it. 
I know there's people who listen to this podcast or our show who think we don't like Bill Snyder. One, that's not true. <laughs> it's just not gosh darn no, true. No, it's not. Because I love Bill Snyder. I mean, we so both will get to K-State, yeah. So I'm going to say this. The perception of Chris Dawson clearly improved tremendously when he was not tied to Bill Snyder anymore. That's the obvious answer. He had one year outside of Snyder. Now he has Alabama and Oklahoma coming after him. I love Bill Snyder. I think he's one of the greatest coaches of all time, and I think he ran his program what he thought was best, and he used strength and conditioning as a part to break people down, and he won a lot of games doing it. But if you're asking about this kind of stuff and just come out and say it, he's perceived as a different guy now that if people have seen him do what he wanted to do for a year. Oh no! I think yeah. I think that's that's what I wanted you to like wanted yeah. to be said. And that's that's all that needs to be said. I think. Yep. Yeah, I love Bill Snyder too for what he did for K State and you know the person he was that when he coached and stuff. So I will never you know bash Bill Snyder as far as that goes. But I think that's exactly it. I think also part of it too is Kleiman. I mean, not not to sound bad about Snyder, but Kleiman loves to push his guys. So he's not going. He's I'm sure he went to Oklahoma and OU and said, yes, he's amazing. If you the want him. leaders. Yeah, exactly. In all honesty, like, and I'll, hey, we'll talk about this now. And I'm not, I'm sorry to cut you off. But no, that's, that's a good it. point. Yeah. When we, we, we joke about the Derek stuff all the time and because it's been on the board and it, yep. and it is funny. Derek has no plans to leave. Yep. But we've absolutely talked about it. And I know someday somebody's going to want to take Derek. And when that happens and they offer him more money than we do, I'm going to say, go do it, man. Yep. Because that's what it, and I'm not, now I'm, I'm praising myself. <laughs> but the point is, like, somebody with great people is not afraid, you know, of another person wanting them or paying them more. So if Scotty Hazleton is going to go somewhere else make some money, go do it, man. Go kick ass there. I just said ass. It's yep. fine. If Chris Dawson can go be at Alabama or Oklahoma and they want him, he's going to say, hey, go do it. Because Chris Kleiman believes, one, people should get the opportunities they should get. And, two, he has confidence that he can find somebody to replace him. Yep. Just like I know I can plug Woj into DY spot and we're fine. <laughs> So that's my that's my soapbox on that. Yeah. I will. And I'll, I'll add it. And I think it's a good a good thing to consider and see what kind of value or kind of what he is too, or at least another element of him is Ben Newman. Is a confidant um, right. of both uh, Bama and K State. Right. Both Bama yeah. and K State. Both Chris Kleiman. That, he's basically basically too, yep. he basically has clients, is how I would say it. And Chris Kleiman is a ben client. Ben Newman is also close to Mike Cyphers, whose name I've dropped a little yep. lately, yeah. and so might Chris, want to pay attention Chris to. Chris Kleiman yeah. is a client. And Nick Saban is a client, and Mike Cyphers is a client. Mike Cyphers is now going to maybe be around K-State a little right. bit more. And now Chris Dawson's maybe going to be around Nick Saban a little bit more. I think Ben Newman likes to put some of his people together, and I think that's what happens too. And I think that is an asset and advantage that K-State's going to be able to who take else, the right who time else advantage. Who else do you want to be able to work alongside? I mean, like, right, yeah. Yeah. does it suck if you lose out of Bama? Sure. And D.Y.'s not saying that K-State should be a farm system and get people to Bama. But they're not. They'll take people – Anyway, and we don't know if that, that's a speculation. That's speculation, but, but it's but, a weird coincidence. But, yeah, uh, <laughs> that's – I just think, you know, it, the whole staffing thing is fascinating to talk about because we talk about it so much, yep. you know, and I just – yeah, yeah. Um, let's see. I want to get Flando back involved yeah. here. So, football Ooh. questions for Flando. This is Turbo 43. This is our last question. And, let, and I've, I've missed something. I missed Scott's earlier. I'm sorry. I get looking ahead and scrolling, and, and it wasn't intentional. If I missed your question – Write me a mean DM and tell me yeah. I skipped it on purpose, and I will record a case today that answers just your question. <laughs> um, Flanders, how long are we in? Almost an hour. Okay, so maybe yeah. 45 minutes of football. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. Football questions from Turbo43. Football freshman who is not – sorry, let me start over. Football freshman most likely not to redshirt based off talent. So, Flando, if you, need a, if you need a list of football freshmen, whatever that kind of stuff, yeah. who's a football freshman? Like, let me just throw some names at you. you who's, got, who's not going to redshirt? Is that, yeah. yeah, the question is, is intended to ask you. Who plays right away? What freshman plays right away? Pick one based on talent. Who, who do you love? You, I kind of I kind of think, I mean, Will Swanson could, yeah, could get into the answer. conversation That's as a guy that has a really good blocking tight end that could be a piece. I agree. I think he will play as yeah. a freshman. I agree. I think that's an elite answer. Ooh, that's the yes. actually. I was going. I thought you were going to say that's actually the correct answer. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> it's actually the, the freshman I'm hearing the most praise about right now. Yeah. yeah. So, is it, uh, well, I will say a different one because I'm my own man. Yeah. yeah. I'm like the, <laughs> that's what I was going to say. I, I was going to say. Those T, are the two T, obvious. T Denson. Yeah. T Denson. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I like that. I Don't, forgot. I you say fresh because that was my mind. G- Dawson Del Forge. Yeah, no, Dawson Del Forge <laughs> is red hot. Right, I'm not joking. Yeah. It is red hot yep, right now. Yep. Um, so that was football freshman most likely not to redshirt based on talent. You said Swanson. You said Swanson. I said T. Denson. Football freshman who is most likely not to redshirt based on lack of depth. But bet you wish you had Swanson for that answer. 
That's <laughs> I heard. We, who I says mean, we can't say it again? I mean, you can say it again. So most likely based on talent, you said Swanson based on lack of depth. Is it Swanee again? It's probably Del Forge, right? Well, he's a junior college transfer. Oh, you can't then, say oh, it. Oh, you can't yeah. say it. But, yeah. hey, that would have been a good But So, yeah, I'll probably Del say Forge Swanson again. I'll probably yeah. stick with Swanee. Yeah. So, uh, I was going to say, I guess we can't because he said no. I was going to say Derek Newton. but yeah. <laughs> Sophomore, <laughs> no, can't do it. Sorry. <laughs> He might be a freshman, like, right now. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, technically yeah. speaking, in his junior college life, he's a freshman. So, uh, Man. Uh, man. Did you say yours? It's probably Swanson. I was trying to get a better answer, but I don't know. Let me think about this. I don't. Oh, let's think through this. What let's about, take some time. Hey, does that Nobody, have to be a true freshman? <laughs> well, they got to have a red shirt on them. So, I mean, I guess if you've got a, <laughs> yeah, yeah, a yeah. freshman who's <laughs> not a true freshman but has a red shirt available. Then you could use them, but I don't think there's one of those. <laughs> so I was gonna say Tyron Lewis at safety. Yeah, but no, that doesn't count. So who else it's we got? Swanson. Okay, nobody on the offensive line, right? We don't see any true freshman Be- no. receiver. It's only Jalen Travis. I wouldn't put it. There's there's no. good depth of receiver. So yeah. I wouldn't say that. Good depth of Swanson. Hey, hey, what about? What if I'm being different? What about Will Howard? What if he's your backup quarterback? He could, maybe he's you know, QB two if he has know, a good spring. I don't. Ex- I wouldn't. He wouldn't be my answer. I'm just looking for other possibilities. Well, it's, maybe Will to Howard. Be a, to a quarterback is probably a better answer than any other offensive spot besides yeah. Swanson. What Defen- about defensive tackle? That's what I'm thinking about. Well, they brought in JUCO there with Hints and Newton. Newton. I still want to say Banks. Yeah. And, you know, he never committed to K State. Huggins. Um, and they still have Huggins, and they right. still have. Uh, uh, Matthew, Matthew Palomau, of course, a young guy. Who's, who's so. going to be on the other end of Hubert? Well, you still got Boo Massey back. Uh-huh. Lamar Gaines, so the junior college transfer from Hutch. Yeah. Uh, there's still, a, I'm forgetting somebody who played like yeah. significant snaps, didn't I? Yeah, it's, like it's, an end. They lost Ball they lost, Walker. Yeah. Uh, Hubert. They lost, yep. Boo uh, Massey. Oh, uh, Killy Duke. Yeah. Oh yeah, Killy Duke. Duke. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Yep. So, yep. Yep. yeah. And then you go, of course, have other freshmen we haven't seen a lot of yet. Spencer Trussell, Cartes, Brook Jones. You know, that kind linebacker. Of thing. You're good. They're good. They're there for next year. Lose, as long as Hughes stays healthy. You lost Patton, but you got Hughes back. Yep. Right. So they're not, and then we already got to the secondary. We referenced T. Denson. And Parker uh-huh. and Neal are back at corner. Right. Right. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Right. I, I think Swanson. Swanee. Swanee. Well, man, that's it. I got no more questions. <laughs> I got no more questions for you guys. It was a fun podcast. It was a really fun podcast, I think. You know, now, uh, you know, tomorrow, K-State KU will watch that. Should we tell them that we're going to start working on some, some Devin Ankle Pro Day stuff? Yeah, like, sure. You know, I don't see why stuff? not. Now let's not did. tell them. Yeah, let's not. <laughs> let's not tell them. Let's we'll not. Let's, let's, go let's go for real. We're going to wrap, wrap this thing up. wrap it up instead. We do appreciate <laughs> you listening very, very much. I appreciate Derek Young driving down from KC and being here tonight. He's going to be with us all again, all day again tomorrow. We're going to have a great time. Great Flanders. Hey, thanks for showing up. That's going to do it for us. I'm Matt Hall, and I wish you would tell your friends.